The weather is really unpredictable these days. Yesterday, it was raining so hard. Now, it's too hot. I have to get out of this heat. Finally, a cool shade where I can sit and rest a bit. What makes the Earth warmer than it would otherwise be is the emission of too much greenhouse gases that trap some of the infrared radiation that escapes from the Earth. In the resulting heat, such as the one we're experiencing right now, we need more trees like this to cool our homes, community, and the planet. They have leaves that not only give us a cooling shade, but are also useful in offsetting greenhouse gas emissions. Let's get to know more about this amazing plant organ with the help of Dr. Giuseppe Dio, a multi-awarded teacher and holder of a PhD in biology, and her students from Philippine Science High School Western Desires Center. We are on an adventure to study one of the most important plant organs, the leaves. Students, Please collect some leaves. Are you ready now? Then go! Enzo, go! Oh. No, you didn't. Today, I will teach you how to classify leaves. Ma'am, why do we need to do that? Classifying leaves will enable you to name and identify some plants in the future. Take out your leaf sample. Who can describe to me where the leaf blade is? This thin flat structure is the leaf blade. This is the leaf apex, and the part of the leaf attached to the petiole is the leaf blade. The petiole is this structure attached to the node. Alfonso, can you point to me where the leaf petiole is? This is the leaf base. And this is the petiole, or the stalk that is attached to the nodes of the stem. Very good, Alfonso. But wait, my leaf doesn't have a petiole. That's correct, Lorenzo. Some leaves don't have petioles. These are called sessile leaves. 
Now, who can point to me where the midrib is? The structure which is continuous with the petiole is the midrib. Very good, Ashley. Now look at your leaf samples. What structures arise from the midrib? Um, veins and veinlets arise from the midrib, creating a network pattern. My leaf doesn't have netted veins. The veins are arranged in a parallel manner. That's correct, Lorenzo. Some veins are arranged in parallel manner, such as in monocot plants. The edge of the leaf is called the leaf margin. In some plants, tiny flaps of tissues called stipules grow at the base of the petiole. The leaves are the most active organs of the plant. Leaves are very important not only for the plants but for all living things. Can you tell me why? Well, the leaves are a major site of photosynthesis. It is where carbon dioxide and water is transformed into glucose, and a very important source of energy for plants. Leaves make our surroundings beautiful. They also give us shade and shelter. See? We're very comfortable discussing our lesson under these trees. The leaves of these trees absorb heat and protect us from the heat of the sun. You are all correct. But before we proceed, let us first review the internal structure of the leaf. A cross section of the leaf would reveal three layers. The upper and lower epidermis, the mesophyll layer, and the vascular tissues. Can you tell me what are the functions of the epidermis? Ma'am, the epidermis consists of a layer of cells on the upper and lower surfaces of the leaf. Um. The epidermis also provides protection from mechanical injuries and parasite attacks. Ma'am, what causes the guard cells to open and close? That's a very good question, Ashley. The opening and closing of the stomata are due to the variations in the turgor pressure causing the changes in the shape of the guard cells. When there is more water in the leaf, the guard cells are turgid and therefore the stomata open. When there is less water, the guard cells are not turgid and the stomata are closed. Ma'am, what tissues are found in between the plant epidermis? The mesophyll tissue is found between the upper and the lower epidermis. The cells in this layer contain chloroplasts where most of the photosynthetic activities take place. Vascular bundles containing both xylem and phloem are embedded within the mesophyll with fine veins reaching very close to each photosynthetic cell. Thus, each mesophyll cell receives the energy from sunlight transmitted through the clear epidermis, carbon dioxide from the air diffusing through the stomata, and water from the xylem. The sugars produced by the mesophyll cells are carried downwards from the mesophyll cells to the petiole to the rest of the plant by the phloem. Wow, how organized the leaves are in performing their functions for the plants. Now, let us classify leaves based on the number of leaf blades attached to a petiole. A simple leaf has only one leaf blade attached to a petiole. A compound leaf has several leaflets attached to a petiole.
Now look at your plant samples. This mum is an example of a simple leaf. Mm -hmm. This is also a simple leaf. My leaf is also a simple leaf. Are you having fun describing your leaves? Yes, yes mum. Today, I will teach you how to classify plants based on leaf arrangement or phyllotaxis. In an alternate leaf arrangement, only one leaf is attached to the node. In an opposite leaf arrangement, two leaves are attached to a node. In a world arrangement, three or more leaves are attached to the node. So look at some of these leaves. Please identify the type of leaf arrangements you can find there. Mom, this has an opposite leaf arrangement. Mm -hmm. This is an alternate leaf arrangement. This is also an alternate leaf arrangement. Very good. There are still many things you can learn about the leaf structure. There is another way to classify the leaves. This time, it is based on leaf venation. Dicot plants have netted veins. The leaf consists of main veins that branch and rebranch into veinlets, forming a network pattern. Most monocot plants like rice, corn, banana, and orchids have parallel veins in their leaves. The leaf veins are equidistant and are perpendicular to the midrib. Look at your leaf samples. My leaf has parallel veins. Very good. Mine has netted veins. I also have netted veins. Now, we will classify the leaves based on their leaf margin. An entire leaf margin has a smooth edge. A serrate leaf margin has saw-tooth edge. And a lobe margin has indentions. My leaf has a lobe margin. Mm -hmm. This has an entire leaf margin. Mine has a serrated leaf margin. Very good. You are all learning very fast. I would like you to know that the most important environmental factors that affect the growth of leaves are light, temperature, and water availability. Thus, Plants have evolved leaf modifications to adapt to these changing environmental conditions. For example, plants growing in the forest floor have plenty of water throughout the year, but have very little sunlight because of deep shade cast by the large trees above them. So their leaves tend to be extremely large, an adaptation to low light level and abundant water. Desert plants have evolved two adaptations in response to limited water and very high temperature. One group of plants, the succulents, have very thick leaves that store water. The leaves have also thick cuticle that greatly reduces water evaporation from the leaves. The cacti, on the other hand, reduce their leaves into thin spines that protect the plants from the herbivores and reduce water loss. The following are other leaf modifications. The bulb scales are storage leaves typical of onions and tulips. This type of modified leaves serve for storage of food.
tendrils are modified leaves specialized in climbing and clinging to other objects for support. Examples of plants with tendrils are garden peas, sweet peas, and trumpet flowers. Bracts are modified leaves found at the base of the flower stalk. In some plants, the bracts are colorful, thus they help attract pollinators. Insect trapping leaves are highly specialized leaves that attract, capture, and digest insects. Examples of these plants are the pitcher plant, Venus flytrap, and sanju. These plants live in nitrogen-poor swamps and derive most of their nitrogen supply from the bodies of the insects they trap. Reproductive leaves can produce new plants from the petioles or marginal notches. Katakataka leaves produce adventitious roots on their leaf margin. Wow, plants are amazing! We are learning very fast and enjoying too. I think it's because we get to see the samples right before our very eyes touch them, and classify them according to the descriptions given to us. It's fun to learn this way. I'm glad you're enjoying this kind of activity. Okay, Habers, it's better to study plants where they are found. Nature is such a beautiful laboratory for learning. Look at plants around you, observe their leaves, and try to classify them. Who knows, one day, you will become a plant taxonomist and contribute to the growing field of plant taxonomy and plant conservation efforts in the country. Bye, k Habers. Bye. Bye! We have learned that leaves are the major site of photosynthesis. As plants and trees grow, they help offset greenhouse gas emissions by storing carbon in their leaves, wood, and bark, and releasing oxygen into the atmosphere. We can do our part in reducing greenhouse gas emissions by nurturing plants as part of nature and as a major source of life's energy. So, by planting more trees, we not only save the forests, but animals and human life as well.